I'm here with Helen Leach, who's Head of Rewilding Britain, and Chris Packham, Naturalist and Wildlife Presenter. And um, this year at Bird Fair, we're talking rewilding, and we've got a brilliant lecture that's going to happen at 7.30. So I just want to find out a little bit more about where are we at with rewilding in Britain at the moment. We're still fairly early days. Um, rewilding's become a bit of a buzzword, but actually the idea's been around for a while, and it's been happening in different places for a while. So if you take um, the Nether Estate, just south of Horsham, um, there about 10 years ago, the landowner decided to take that land out of production and put um, ecological drivers back in place. So he's put in longhorn cattle, Tamworth pigs, deer, and he's just seen a boom in biodiversity. So projects like Nether are, are stimulating more interest, both in terms of what can be done for nature, but also he's developed a very different economic model there uh, based on ecotourism and production of um, extensive beef um, which has turned around the fortunes of the estate as well so um, there's a growing interest from both perspectives. Okay um, just sort of from the person next door how would you sort of describe rewilding in a very very basic form? It's about allowing nature space to do its thing it's about allowing natural processes to function. So rather than focusing on a particular species or a particular habitat, it's about giving uh, process, the natural processes space to, to work and then species and habitats will develop as a result. And Chris, you're, you're very passionate, aren't you, about mm -hmm. rewilding? And of course, England used to be a, a huge habitat for so many different animals, which we don't have anymore. Yeah, I think one of the things that excites me about this, uh, although as Helen says, it's not a new idea, it's been going on for some time, um, is that we are desperate for new ideas because conservation is not working in the UK. State of Nature report, which came out a few years ago, pointed out that most of our major habitats are in decline and many of our species are in decline too. So conservation needs to move forward. It needs to think more broadly. It needs to take more risks. And it needs to be standing up for what we now have uh, in terms of answers and solutions. And these are things that we've evolved over many years of study and, and experimentation. And I feel rather confident at the moment that we could be doing a lot more for the British landscape and for the creatures that live there than we are. And rewilding certainly fits into that portfolio of things that we should be more rapidly implementing. The only problem with rewilding I see at the moment is that it's not happening quickly enough. Yeah. And of course it can happen on a much smaller scale, can't it? Because lots of people focus in on the big predators like wolves and then they go, oh my gosh, we can't have wolves and we can't have bears come back. But it can be done in a much smaller, sort of more immediate way, couldn't it? Like um, losing all the vegetation well, on the tops of hills and stopping flash flooding and things like that. I think one of the biggest problems rewilding has at the moment is its image and I know that Helen's very keen to, to help you know we, we dress that image because I think a lot of people exactly as you say think it's about just turning a load of wolves out of a transit in somewhere in Scotland on Friday night or something you know um, but very obviously from an ecological point of view you can't have top of the food chain predators until you've got a functional mm. ecosystem that can support them beneath that so rewilding starts quite literally at grassroots you know you've got to rebuild habitats before we can think about those sorts of ambitious end games, as, as it were. I think there's scope to, to put in some other exciting animals in the interim period where habitat remains intact, um, and, and we should be doing that because it's, it's worked successfully overseas. Maybe be thinking about lynx, certainly beaver, uh, and some other bird species too. But ultimately, I suppose one of our messages is don't leave it to us. You know, um, you can rewild your space. I mean, I've rewilded my garden, and that doesn't mean just not cutting the grass, it means thinking more creatively about how I can I can manage that resource mm. so that nature can go through its natural functions. So, I mean, we could say, you could argue, okay, let's just let this piece of grass grow here. Um, that wouldn't be a maximum approach because there's probably a maximum of about three species in here. It would take ages for it to be colonised. So what we can do is assist the process to get started. And we certainly have, as I say, the, the technologies and the ability to do that. We just want to see it happen more quickly. Yeah, so what can people do in the local communities in order to, to start rewilding within a local capacity? Well, as Chris says, you can do a lot in your own garden. Um, How about the village? But, but you could also town. work with your village green or even yeah. your local park. There's lots of um, Friends of Parks group. You could leave a wild area. You're increasingly seeing communities are starting to leave wilder areas in the corner of their park. There are local rewilding groups forming at different scales. Some are around a particular village. Um, there's Rewilding Sussex, which covers the whole county. So talk to your friends, talk to your neighbours, talk to your family, start spreading the word about rewilding and bring people together to discuss what do you want for the future of the place where you live and what's the what's the possible future that we can create. And how close are we to reintroducing the lynx? Because I've, I've heard so many different stories, you know, bouncing around, oh, they're going to reintroduce them next year, oh, no, they're not. Um, 
what exactly is happening? I think ecologically they could probably be um, reintroduced quite quickly, but um, I think for any species reintroduction you need to take people with you. Um, you've got to win hearts as well as minds and I think there's still a way to go. There is um, there's still uh, concern that lynx would take would take sheep. I mean the, the recent um, escapee from a zoo on Dartmoor hasn't hasn't helped with that. So I think there there's more conversation that needs to be had um, and we need to think about if we were going to release lynx, um, how are they going to impacts going to be managed? Can we put in compensation schemes for farmers and so on? So there, I think there's a little bit more work to be done, but I hope that we'd see them back within the next five to ten years. Okay. So in the short term and in the long term, what are what are the more realistic goals and what are the goals which are quite a long way away, do you think? I think at the moment we're we're dependent as I see it, Helen, quite no different, but on, on a number of brave philanthropists, people like the Nepa State, where a man has a sufficiently large area to be able to do something quite significant, and he's brave enough to do that. Um, and there are other examples of that in Scotland, and the states are even larger, actually, and the rewilding processes are, are genuinely quite exciting. And what we don't have at the moment are any of the large uh, NGOs in a position to undertake such a project, or obviously anything from government. But, I mean, obviously... I mean, there's, the, the phrase big is better, it, you know, is always going to ring true with these sorts of things. And we live in a very small, overcrowded country, that, you know, space is limited. But what we would hope to see in the future, I think, is people doing their own projects. Community projects are really important. They give us the ability to generate awareness. People learn the benefits and they'll see that in their community. It's tangible for them. Um, and then what we need is the um, impetus that, that guy, uh, gives us to move on to much larger scale projects in, in other parts of, you know, less habitat. Uh, habit, uh, uh, inhabited parts of the country, so that would be good. I'm, I'm rather hopeful. I think at the moment we are being held back by some of the scaremongery which is generated through perhaps some of our own mismanagement when it comes to talking about things uh, such as the links reintroduction. Yes. Helen's absolutely right. We need to win hearts and minds, and we don't do that by frightening people. So let's you know, get ourselves into a position where they can be assured that we know what we're talking about, that any such projects will be done very responsibly in terms of setting up compensation, managing the animals, tracking the animals, finding them also, so on and so forth. All very doable, all done in fact in other parts of Europe. Yeah. Um, we just need to get there. And this country is very different yes, than other parts of exactly. Europe. Exactly. I mean, this is the conversation I have with people all the time about wolves, when everyone goes, oh, wouldn't it be lovely just to release all the wolves into Scotland? And, you know, I love wolves so much. The last thing I want is to see them released and then all shot because you know they are doing very well and of course as you know when you when you release wolves and they breed and they spread out we aren't the country that we used to be which used to have vast forests and places that they could go and hide it's just not that place anymore and we but don't have federal land you know in the UK you know as far as I'm aware talking speaking globally you know fewer people own more land than anywhere else so, of course, if you haven't got those landowners on your side, you're never going to progress. And at the moment, what I'm enjoying, I'm sure I too, is that a number of those large landowners are pioneers in this respect. Mm. And what we're hoping is that, as uh, Helen said about the Nepa State, people will see the benefits, their neighbours, other people, yeah. and think, that's, that's not a bad idea, I might try that myself. And then they'll be more accepting of perhaps some of the braver projects that you've got in Thanks for talking to us and I wish you the best of luck. Thank and you. I hope to see a much cleaner and rewilded England. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.